Well, here we are. Time for the salmon dye section. <laughs> and to start with, we have two partners, Miss Anima, Miss Alicia. And you will notice the distance between them. Oops. Whoa, there, they <laughs> corrected themselves. <laughs> now, the first thing we're going to look at is the shape of our salmon. It is a streamlined shape. You will be drawing this in your booklet in the place indicated, just the shape. Now, this streamlined shape is very important. It helps the salmon. Take a moment to record the shape of your salmon on your salmon dissection sheet. Now let's look at the fins. The fin on the top of the body on the back is called the dorsal fin and is responsible for keeping the fish upright. The tail fin, also known as the caudal fin, pushes side to side and moves the fish. It is responsible for movement. The anal fin is located at the back bottom part of the fish and also helps to keep the fish stable and upright. The pelvic fins are found at the bottom of the fish on the bottom side and they are responsible for steering and balance along with the pectoral fins which you can see indicated here with the white arrow. The last fin is the adipose fin which is located on the very dorsal back part of the salmon. It does not have a known job, and often it is removed from hatchery fish in order to identify them. Our fish is a hatchery fish. It does not have an adipose fin. Please take a moment to draw all the fins on your dissection recording sheet. All right, so now that you've drawn the fins, on your salmon. We are going to take a look up close at one fin. There a still will be attached so you can look very carefully at the tail fin. You will notice that it has <clears throat> a fan of bone-like spines with thin skin stretched between each of the spines. If we compare this to our limbs which are linked to our bones. So are the salmon's fins attached to bones in the salmon? No. <laughs> salmon fins are actually embedded in their muscles and this makes them very flexible as they move in the water. Now draw that fin up close. We are going to move on to the nostrils now. Miss Anima is going to point out where each nostril is. You can see that <clears throat> they are on either side close to the eye. Now we're going to move to the gills of our salmon. Alicia, if you could indicate where the gill cover is. Alicia is touching the gill cover right now. This has a special name. The gill cover is called the opercolum. And as you can see, there's the gill tucked away inside under that opening. Will you draw the gill cover on your original drawing now? Okay, so now that you've drawn your gill cover on, now we are going to remove the gill. This is our first going into the actual salmon. And Alicia is going to begin cutting, disattaching. Now the salmon has, on each side it has gills. So if we are unsuccessful <laughs> in getting this one, we can still try on the other side. See, this is hard. It's tricky. And there is the 
gill. Now Alicia is going to open the gill. And you will see there are four layers in. They actually look quite pretty, don't they? Four layers. Now, if I could get you to just indicate the gill rakers on the end. Yes. Okay. You are now going to draw the gill with the four layers and try to show the fanning, which are the gill rakers. Now, the gills. What exactly is the purpose of the gills? Now that you've drawn them and you've drawn the four layers and the gill rakers, the main purpose of the gills is to absorb oxygen from the water. The way we use our lungs, we breathe in. From air, we get oxygen and our lungs are the organ that are managing that. For the salmon, it is the gills are doing that job and the oxygen is coming from the water. So the main purpose is to absorb oxygen. Now the reason they have four layers is because each layer increases the whole surface area of the gill, meaning more oxygen can be absorbed through a larger surface area. Then the gill rakers, which Alicia is touching, the gill rakers help to keep food out of the gills and they redirect the food to the salmon's throat for it to swallow because you don't want food, it'd be like us getting food in our lungs or something. So that is the gills. Now there are two questions that follow. So now take a moment to answer the two questions. The scales. This is the next part of the external anatomy that we will look at. So we're going to go back to the coat. That's where the scales are. And uh, Miss Anima is going to remove several scales with the spoon. And as you you can see they are very, very, very tiny, but they are very, uh, very hard, like a fingernail. Salmon begin to grow these scales when they are fries. The scales are arranged in rows and patterns. They protect the body. Draw several rows of scales on your original salmon drawing right now. Uh, it's more information about the scales, very important. Uh, the scales grow as the salmon grows and each scale forms line like, like the rings of a tree. But we can't tell from these tiny ones. You have a picture of a magnified scale in your booklet. Notice the way the lines are grouped. This tells you the age of the salmon. And if you look very carefully, you can see where all the lines are. Can you see in your picture how they're actually in three groups? That means this salmon is three years old. Three groupings of lines. Not each line, but groupings of lines. A little bit different than trees. Um, and salmon have the same number of scales for their whole life. And if they lose a scale, another one grows in to replace it. In the lateral line, and we're going to just see the whole breadth of the lateral line. That line is a series of liquid filled canals below the skin along the side of the fish. This line is very important for the salmon. It helps the salmon detect sound waves and disturbances in the water. It also helps the salmon judge distances and to find its way in dark or muddy water. 
go back to your original drawing and put the lateral line on it. The final part of the external sa salmon anatomy we'll look at is the vent. Ms. Anima is indicating the vent. This is an opening on the underside of the fish. Eggs are laid here by females. That's where they come out. Milt is released from here by males. And both the males and females eliminate waste as well from the vent. So that is the conclusion of the external anatomy of the salmon. Part two, we are moving on to the internal Okay, we are now going inside the salmon to look at the internal anatomy. First, we need to cut the fish open, starting at the vent and ending at the throat. Miss Anima will do the honors. <laughs> oh, just like cutting the fabric or something. And now she is going to open and we will see a magic all moment. We have a boy. Ah, uh, we have a male. <laughs> we were hoping it would be a female. We have a male. Because the female would have eggs, but instead we have a male. So, if our fish were a female, there would have been two sacks of eggs joined to the fish near the head. However, our fish is male. We are going to find two quite huge sacs, or testes, <coughs> that make milt when the male is ready to spawn. Ms. Anima is going to pull those out. No, I'm going to hold it. Okay, so the two testes, or milt sacs, are coming out. They contain sperm. And when spawning occurs, they're squeezed out of the vent to fertilize the eggs. Delicate operation. That's where it attaches to the vent. Oh yes, there's where it attaches to the vent and the sperm would come through the vent, through that tube in out the vent. Ah, there we go. Milt sack. Two of them. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to go to is the liver. We're going to find the liver. We pull that out and the gallbladder may also be attached to the liver or it may be nearby. It's a little hard to get. <laughs> you have to work for it, right? <laughs> the liver. Right now in your booklet you are going to draw the liver in the space provided then describe its color and texture. Miss Anima, could you cut open so we can see what the liver looks like on the inside and you can describe that as well in the place indicated. Well, place your hand on your heart. Where is it located? On your left side, near your lungs. And why is it located near there? Because 
your lungs pump fresh oxygen in your heart from the circulatory respiratory system. You remember all the connections between these two things. Now, Miss Anima or Miss Alicia, can you point to where the salmon's heart is located in its body? Ah, as you can see, it's very close to the head. Very close to the head. If this was on us, it would be like uh, near our mouth. Now, of course, there is a reason for the salmon's heart, and you can start removing the heart, for it to be near the head because it has to be near the gills. The gills are what salmon use to absorb oxygen, so they have to be very close to the heart, whereas uh, in humans, it is our lungs that need to be close to the heart for the same reason, getting the oxygen. the question that asks you to describe where the heart is located and explain why it is located there. Okay, now we're going to move on to the digestive system and we're going to try to remove all the key components um, together as much as we can. So we're going to, I, th I think we should perhaps try to remove it. And then we'll go through each part. Okay. Put this oh, the, the yeah, the through the mouth. That's going into the stomach. And now we're going to remove the digestive system. I'm going to do this probably just a little while there. So you're just kind of detaching it right there, like up in this membrane here. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of just pull it out wherever, and then teasing away the sides. Am I gonna, am I gonna break the top though? How is this, like, is this attached to the mouth, right? Like, yeah, like they'll just be like, how am I detaching? I cut it. Oh, you cut it. Like in here? Yeah, it doesn't matter how high up, I don't think. <gasps> Delicate yeah. operation. Getting that digestive system out. Oh, the swim bladder. Good. I just have to detach that. So you can see here the the duct. This is the large intestine that connects out into the vent. Okay. So here is the entire digestive. <laughs> track of the salmon. And then we'll go through the individual. Okay, so the first part is the esophagus, and I don't even know if we can see the esophagus. It is very short on the salmon, unlike our esophagus, which is much longer, because yeah, it's further to go. We can't see it. Yeah, we can't see it. Um, the stomach. This animal is indicating where the stomach is. And now the uh, pyrolid kea cup, kea cup, aka small intestines. They're like the small intestines. That was a very huge Latin type word. Uh, and they serve the same function as our small intestines, where they are absorbing um, nutrients or molecules from the food from food that you have eaten and has been gone through all the first stages of digestion. Next is the spleen. And the spleen, as you can see, is very dark. and It is a storehouse of blood, of extra blood cells. And now the large intestine, quite long, and this leads right down to the vent, and this is how waste is eliminated from digestion for the salmon, just like how it is for us. That is the digestion. So you're going to draw the digestive system from the plate into the place on your booklet and then and label the parts. Then 
answer the question on the following sheet about similarities to our digestive system and the salmons. And now we are going to remove the swim bladder and look how large that is. It's huge. This is a careful, another careful operation to get the swim bladder out. As fries, that is when salmon first develop their swim bladder and they must fill it with air. That's why they're called swim up fries. This allows them to become buoyant in the water. Um, salmon can adjust the amount of air in that swim bladder so they can hover at different levels in the water. So this is very important for their movement, etc., in the water and very hard to get out. <laughs> Is perfect. Oh, here. Here. It floats yeah. along the surface of the water, all nice and buoyant. And that was a perfect removal. <laughs> I don't have to blow it up with straws or anything. <laughs> well, <it's funny> <laughs> answer the question about the swim bladder in your booklet. Now we're going to go to the kidneys. And Alicia is indicating where the kidneys are. We are going to remove the kidneys. There's actually two of them. It's a little hard to see. There's a front and a back, and each has a different function. The front kidney produces red blood cells, and the back kidney cleans the blood. So this is a tricky operation, getting out the kidneys. Now answer the question where you describe the function of the front and back kidneys. Next in your booklet is the skeletal system, but we are going to leave this for the end for a reason that you will see later. So we'll come back to that. I'd like you to move on now <coughs> to the eyes. In the space provided, draw a model of a human eye. This is a golf ball. This is basically the size of our eye. Of course, we don't see all of that. We see only a very small portion. Most of it is inside. And Alicia is going to try to remove the eye now of the salmon, and we will draw the salmon eye beside your model of a human eye. Here it comes.
is the eye. Wow. Okay. Um, and then answer the question beside your eye drawing both our eye and the salmon eye. Now we are going to look at the brain. I'm saying now again, but. <laughs> and Miss Anima is going to remove, well, decapitate it. No other way of putting it. We're going to take the head off and then we are going to struggle <laughs> because this is one of the hardest parts of the dissection. And you went in from the top, right? Um, to I get to the brain. I have sped this part in the video up because it takes quite a long time to actually get to the brain out. Yeah, I think so. Because it's going to just, just be. Right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Miss Anima's pointing to where the brain actually oh, is. In there. Mm -hmm. You can see it's quite small, actually. Okay, that was quite a struggle with the brain. It's very hard. We're now going to go back to number eight, the skeletal system. And Alicia is holding it open right now. Um, I would like you to now do the uh, diagram of the, the backbone. Just draw the backbone and the ribs in the space provided. Going to, we are going to pull the entire backbone with ribs attached as best we can. We are going to pull the skeletal system right out of the salmon. And then we can maybe get a better look at the actual backbone and it's Oh, there it comes. Here. Yeah. You see the vertebrae here with the the bones of the or the cartilage cartilage bones of the ribs here. And then these are the, the bones that extend up into the the top part of the fish. And you can see let me cut this open. You can see the shape of the, the bone, the vertebrae are the same as what we are familiar with, with people. Mm -hmm. And the uh, spinal column is inside. Yeah, the spinal cord is inside here. Spinal cord. Okay, awesome. So concluding, there is one more section of your booklet 
to fill in and that is reflecting on the dissection. There's two questions. Think carefully about them and that is the end.